you. Hello. My name is Jill. I am from the Netherlands and I'm 20 years old. And I have made a book collection in the Netherlands that sold very well. And now I'm trying do to do something similar in German-speaking countries. And um, let me start with a brief overview about what I'm going to talk about. First, I will tell you what my idea is. Second, then, I will tell you how it all started. Then I will tell you the high and low points I've experienced so far. And then I will show you some examples. And finally, I will tell you what the next steps will be. So, what is my idea? Well, it's actually very simple. For me, it's all about making life sweet. The little things that count and seeing the positive things in life. And drawing and writing has always been my biggest passion. I've been drawing and writing since I can hold a pencil. And I always build a, a world around it. For me, it's, uh, it's a way of translating what I see and feel around me. And it's a moment where I just don't have to think about anything. So here I was 12 years old. And I always created my own little world by cutting and drawing and writing. In high school, I draw and wrote my own school calendar. First of all, in the Netherlands, uh, a school calendar is a very big thing. There are more than 150 brands, and especially girls take a lot of time to choose the right one. For me, I couldn't find the right one. So I pimped up my own, <laughs> and I, I drew and wrote and made little tests and tips and tricks in my calendar. And I found out that my friends around me really liked my calendar. So um, <laughs> before I knew it, I went home with their school calendar to pimp their school calendar up. And it was the first time where I, where I realized that they really liked it. And it was also the moment where I decided that this is what I wanted to do. So when I came home, I told my parents that I wanted to quit school. <laughs> um, which my mother was, of course, not very fond of, because I was 15 years old. I did not have a plan and no clue about the future either. So the plan wasn't realistic at all. But she did feel my passion, and she knew this was my biggest dream. So she stimulated me, and she promised that if I could manage to make a whole school calendar the way I would want to have it, she would suggest it to a publisher. But there was only one condition. I had to finish school. I had to graduate. <laughs> so this is where it started to become a little more professional. I finished my school calendar. My mom sent it to a publisher, and I was invited by this publisher to come over, and he really liked my drawings. So he offered me to illustrate for one of his, il for one of his existing brands. But soon after, he called me again, and he said, I showed it to my daughters, and we like your drawings, and we like your writing. We give you the chance to publish your own school calendar. So for me, this was a dream come true. And as a next step, I had to think about a brand name. And I wanted a name that suited to everyone, and it should, it should stand for something but it should at the same time be timeless and suit to every occasion and every person. So I chose for my life is sweet because this is what the purpose of the school calendar was. Oh, sorry. I did that too soon, but sorry. Uh, I'm, not, and I'm not talking about my own life. 
It's not that my life should be sweet. The whole idea is to give inspiration that my friends and all the girls who buy my school calendar can create something for themselves and that they make their life sweet in their own personal way. And the idea is that the book will come be become their book. And the reactions were very positive of the of the school calendar because it was sold out within two weeks. So that was a success. And I've been doing it now for six years, the school calendar. But at the moment that the school calendar came out, high school wasn't my first priority anymore. But I did have made a promise to my mom, and especially my dad would be very disappointed if I didn't graduate. So. I worked very hard to make sure I did graduate and well I think you can say my teachers were a little surprised that I graduated but I did <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't I did also found out about other things that did not match school I found out about boys and partying and everything else around it so I really wanted to make a new book, a new book that was not about school. And this book was inspired by my best friend, who once called me desperately from her kitchen because she wanted to impress her boyfriend with a homemade dish, but she could not cook. <laughs> so <laughs> she decided she would make it easy for herself and she would make a microwave dish. <laughs> But, and do not ask me how, she managed to mess up this microwave dish. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she called me because she knew I was having some similar experiences. I was spending my evenings writing, you know, top five lists of what to wear on a first date. What should you not be eating? What should you order? And I always had important messages for my friends such as do not order pesto or mice or anything else that can stick in your teeth when you're dining out with a guy you like. <laughs> so <laughs> she called me and for this was the inspiration for the cookbook that was uh, the, the first cookbook was born with this idea because she was my inspiration for this. And the idea of the cookbook is just the res that the recipes are fast and handy, but they also taste and look good. Because no matter how good you look as a girl, I think you should be able to serve something eatable. <laughs> really. <laughs> so I added, um, I added other tips too, such as what on earth should you be wearing when you meet his parents for the first time? or anything el everything else that's suited to the cooking world that I found important as a 16-year-old girl. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I don't think girls should be traditional, but I feel that it's just easier that if you know a little bit about cooking, etiquettes, or the dress codes, you know, it just makes life easier. And that was the purpose of the cookbook. And Everything around it for the cookbook included for me things like makeup, dress codes, flirt tips. So I thought, you know, why not bring it together? Why not make a tasty oven dish when your friends come over to party? Those 40 minutes are great for a last hair make or makeup check. And it's just easy to prepare. So this book also sold very well. Three prints in one year and a new title next year. And the base for the recipe is always very easy. They should taste good, they should be easy to make, and they should have a little glamorous touch. So I love doing all this. But after I graduated, all my friends suddenly started studying, <laughs> and my parents were realistic. You can't live from a few books. So there was a lot of pressure around me and I didn't really know what I wanted to do either. So I just, I was struggling a bit. But then I met someone, a friend of my family who needed an au pair 
in New York City. So <laughs> I said, yes, right away, I'm going. And I lived there for a year as a nanny. And this city inspired me, inspired me very much. I met very inspiring people, and I felt the dynamic energy of the city and the hard-working vibe of New York. And for the first time in my life, people didn't ask me, what do you study, or what are you going to study, but they asked me, what do you do? What is it what you are doing? What is your dream? And it was such a relief that I wasn't surrounded anymore by people who judged me for, uh, for what I was not studying, but for what I was doing, that it inspired me and gave me the freedom to continue what I am doing. And I decided to make a book I wanted to make for a long time. I wanted to make a gift guide for girls. This is a book. Um, this is a book about homemade personal gifts for your friends. And I wanted to make something that, uh, that suited to every type of girl. And the question was, how can you find a gift based on someone's personality and not on the way she looks? Because when you look at someone's character, you can find exactly what she wants. And when you make it yourself, it's even more personal. I will show you some examples. First of all, Oh, wait. <laughs> First of all, this is a vintage tea candle. Uh, a tea in a vintage tea cup. You can make this for the romantic friend who is always dreaming of her Prince Charming. And it's very easy to make also. And here are the tips what you should not be giving to a romantic type of friend or should. This is an example for the more adventurous friend. You could give her a pimped up throwaway camera, which is super practical because as a girl who is always on the, on the go, she can drop it every once in a while, which does not matter. So I came back from New York with a new plan for a new book, but most important, I came back with a new plan for my future. From now on, I was not going to listen to any other opinions anymore, but I was going to follow my dream. It's my life. And even though I do s see myself studying something someday, I'm not going to rush because my study is right now and I learn by doing. This brings me to, to the high and low points. The key of my life is sweet is that it's about being authentic, being who you are. I work from my heart and every page is different, every illustration is unique. And I've always dreamed of products next to the books, but producing them is not a simple task. It takes much time and especially when you work with different license holders, it's not easy to make one whole thing. For example, I made a t-shirt collection with a famous Dutch department store exclusively, but a year later they sold my design to a different department store, which was very frustrating because uh, I didn't know about this and they did not have my permission. So from that point on I decided to focus only on the books and I just wanted to make books. But it went a little different because uh, the next year I was at a book fair in Hamburg and I was with my father in Germany and we decided to take a look because I was very curious what the next books will be for the next season. And this way I made contact to the German publisher Kopenraas. This is a very big company set up by Wolfgang Hülker who is a very creative artistic person who managed to build a world around his books, all in one, in one house. And uh, one of these characters is Der Haas Felix, on the Princessin Lilifei. Uh, and from, as a daughter from an Austrian father, I, of course, also grew up with this Haas Felix. And I knew the story, and I saw it growing from just a book 
to a whole world. Suddenly he could buy the half of Felix or the suitcase he was carrying or the stickers, the towels, everything that suited into his world. So I showed my books to the people who represented Koppenrath and they were very enthusiastic. They asked me if they could send my books to Mr. Hulker himself. And from here on, it goes off very fast. Because within a week, I was invited to Mr. Hilker, and suddenly I was one of his new brands. I could build the world of my life is sweet with him together, which is a dream I still can't really believe. It's really going to happen. So the collection of the books and things perfectly fit together. We've been uh, making them with our heart and my the world of my life is sweet now comes into the shops as one whole thing and it's all a very big adventure for me because I'm traveling between Germany the Netherlands and Austria and it's all new presentations meetings dinners it's very exciting and having an Austrian father is very helpful here <laughs> because the social codes are quite different. In the Netherlands, we are very direct, and we just say what's on our mind at any time. Well, in Germany, people are more polite and discreet. And in Austria, people are more laid back. When you say you meet at three, four o'clock, it's also okay. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's very different. And um, yeah, it's exciting. So what will the next steps be? I have a slide here. One of my biggest inspirations have always been my old diaries and school calendars. The little things that then seemed unimportant now suddenly are precious memories. Handwritings, photos, notes, they are forever. And unlike digital memories, they, uh, for example, laptops, they crash, iPhones, they break down, text messages, they disappear. And this is all forever. So. I created a new type of book. I wanted to make a book that comes with mini diary pages that you can fill in fastly and easily. Short check notes, little fill-ins, stories, tests, check top five lists. There's space for everything that's important enough to write down or just to memorize it. And I want to make a world that inspires others and helps them to document and create their own personal world and to mesmerize it for their whole life. Because I feel it's a universal need, universal need to keep hold of your memories and experiences in life. You know, life goes fast and we want to capture memories. I will show you some examples of the new book. So, uh, well, this is one of the diary pages. It's a checklist, and because I never have time to f fill in super long stories and write, write them down, I wanted to make it fast so you can check mark it and you can go on with your life, but you still created something. And this is a do-it-yourself page. Here you can make your own friendship bracelet. and. Uh, Wait, I missed one page. Yeah, here you can make your own friendship bracelet. Because for me, the message is always very important. The meaning behind them. I always try to add an extra layer to a book or a product. And this page is an example of that. Because here you can learn how you can make this bracelet. But on the other page, which is not in the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> on the other page, there are, is the meaning of the charms you can collect, and they go from well-known symbols such as love and dreams and hope to the less famous meanings such as a dragonfly that stands for harmony or a diamond that stands for clarity. And I want to give that information to young girls so they can collect their own world. Um, Wait, is this? So um, 
The designer John Galliano once said, fashion is understanding. When you know how to dress, you automatically feel more, feel more self-confident, and I totally agree with this. And this is why understanding and knowledge is one of the essential points of my life suite. This is an example of uh, how to dine out like a lady. I, I want to give the base the, of the etiquette and everything around it with handy practical tips so you can tra translate it to your own world. And I don't want to tell people what they should do or should not do. I just want to pass through that. I just want to pass that information. So I hope that my life is sweet, makes the life of other girls sweeter. And of course, not everything is positive in life. And you should not ignore the negative things either. But sometimes it helps if you just add a little positive things and, or just recognize them. And that already helps. And you can make it an attitude to focus on the positive things in life. And that is what My Life is Sweet is about. And this is a picture of the whole collection that will be represented at the Buchmesse in Frankfurt next week. And it will be in the shops from February on in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And... Um, there's one more thing I want to tell you. My mom has always stimulated me to be creative, and I think this is one of the most important things, because if it doesn't get stimulated, it just fades away. I could always draw and write, and I could always tell my story. And with My Life is Sweet, I want to show that if you follow your heart, you can never go wrong. Thank you for listening, and have a sweet day. Thank you.